Let's talk about the Medium Editor. It's been a hot minute since I made this video. I made the previous video to this like a year and a half ago. So I'm excited to jump in and show you the very best practices for using the Medium Editor. Now, the focus on this is to create a story and publish it on Medium with their best practices. There is a lot you can do in the editor, but we're gonna keep it simple here because ultimately that's what Medium wants. They want you to be able to write something that is easy, that is fun, that is straightforward, and that doesn't take, like you're focusing on the writing part, not the formatting part. So let's keep that in mind as we go through this video. So the first step is to hit write. That's it. This takes you to the medium editor and where all of the action is about to happen. They make it easy for you. You can see where your title should go and then they say where your story should go. So let's put in a good title. Let's say that we want to write about cats. Um, why cats are the best. I want to make it clear that medium, sorry, medium, medium prefers title case, which means that every word um, is capitalized unless it's a preposition. Now, if you wanted to do a subtitle, a subtitle about lovely and fun cats that they prefer that to be in sentence case and the way that you can do this is just make it like a sentence and add a punctuation at the end to turn this into a subtitle I, I want to show you actually that this will if you just hit publish it already knows that that's your subtitle because you you have it in the right spot but from a format perspective it helps if you actually turn it into a subtitle by pressing the little t and then now Medium recognizes it title and subtitle. The next thing is an image. I personally like to do my image when I finish the story, but in terms of like order of the, the physical story, it's we're coming to it next. So there are two ways to do this. First, you can search using Unsplash. This is what I recommend for people who just want to get their first story out the door. They don't have time or the energy to scroll through thousands of pictures on the internet. That's fine. Medium makes it easy for you. So you just hit your search term, press enter, and they've partnered with Unsplash, which means that you can just search a ton of pictures that come up. I love this one. How cute is that? Medium likes photos that are horizontally. So like the, they're long on the top and bottom and short on the sides. Um, instead of, for example, let's, let's see. Instead of a long one like this, um, this, you have to scroll to get to the story and remember medium is the focus is on your readers so um, i always go for a horizontal one rather than a vertical one you also have a couple uh, options for size i go for this as the default um sometimes this if i really like the picture i've seen a very few people do this but it, it has to be a really good picture to warrant that you should always add alt text. This helps people who have visual impairments if they're using a screen reader. This means that they'll still be able to sort of know what the picture is without actually seeing the picture. So cat looks at camera with tongue out. Cute! Save it and there you go. The nice thing about this is it automatically imports the accreditation. I can't stress this enough, always, always, always credit your images. And this is going to become more important as, as I'm about to show you because I don't like using Unsplash to find my pictures. Why? Because if it's on Unsplash, and especially if it's on the first couple pages of results of Unsplash, it's super likely that this picture exists on Medium a thousand times already. And if you're, you want to stand out a little bit. So what I tend to do is I go to Pexels instead. Pexels has a lot of photos. It's a lot easier to sort. Um, so for example, I only ever look at horizontal ones and they upload them with more frequency. They have better, in my opinion, uh, higher quality images. That's just me. Um, like I love this one. How cute is this? So you download it and you'll have to manually copy this, but that's okay. And then I normally just drag like that and there it is. And again, paste your caption in, add the alt text, orange cat snuggling in blanket, and you have an image. So let's talk about the story. What I want to focus on is what the structure should look like. Um, it, obviously, this will depend based on your story. If you're doing a long personal essay, you won't need headers or anything like that. But I find most of the stories I write and most of the stories that tend to do very well on Medium have some kind of a structure. So whether that's a listicle, whether that's um, section by section, whether it has a table of contents, 
a structure just helps your story sort of organize itself and it helps the readers understand what they're going to get from your story. So this is an introduction. You know, it's a silly little thing, but whatever you want. So let's go into our section. Now, if I were talking about why I love cats, you know, why cats are the best, um, they really love you too. And this is going to be the title of a whole section that I'm putting in here. It's the exact same as the title up here. You just pick big T. And I go in here and I can say, there are so many reasons cats show their love. They do slow blinks. They But let's say that you wanted to break up this section even further, which I really recommend if it's a long section. So for example, here we could do slow blinking, highlight this, and it'll turn the whole sentence into a subsection just like that. One of the cool things that I don't see a lot of people doing on Medium is actually embedding things. So you can embed pretty much anything on Medium, an Instagram post, a tweet, an article, anything you want. Um, so what I like to do, NCBI, uh, cat slow blink. Oh, slow blink, not bling. <laughs> uh, see what's in this article, just as an example. All right, go to a new line, that part's important. Paste your link and then hit enter. Takes a second, but Medium turns it into a really nice little embed. You can do this with any article and it, it just automatically does it. It's really neat. Um, some people don't like to do this because they feel it sort of detracts from the story, like it, it breaks it up. So if you prefer, you can always hyperlink. You press that with the hyperlink button, paste your link, and there you go. To get rid of this, you just highlight the text and, you know, backspace. You might also want to include um, a numbered list or a bulleted list. So media makes it super easy to do this. You just type one full stop, and then a space. Reason number one, and then hit enter, and it automatically populates with the number two. Again, you can do the same thing with just a dash, hit dash, and then space, and it turns it into a bullet. If you're doing this, if you wanted to turn this into a listicle, Medium doesn't like that, so it would get rid of the one, you'd have to manually add it back in again, but um, that's not important. You can also bold and italicize your words on here. People do this for emphasis. I recommend doing it as infrequently as you can. Sprinkle them in when you really want your words to pack a punch, but less is more when it comes to medium. Again, you don't want the format to be the standout star of your story. You want the writing to be the standout star. But in case you need to know, you can bold it. You can italicize it. You can bold and italicize. You cannot underline because underlining is only for hyperlinks. So in case you wanted to know. Another thing is you can add quotes. So for example, if I wanted to say what a slow blink is, you could copy that. Write the authors. You can do two types of quotes. You can do that or you can do that. I typically see these when you want to break up like a long section with or you want to pull a quote out to sort of emphasize it and make it seem more important um you can do that i tend again not too much of this because you want the focus to be on your writing so i only ever do one max two in a story at any given time you can always do a quote in line so just like that without any problems but formatically speaking i would only use one or two quotes quotes like this max per story Another thing that's good to know is how to do spacers. I find these really visually attractive and I use them a lot when I'm coming to my conclusion. So I've got my section, my subsection, and I come to my conclusion and I just put little three dots in. And then I just start writing. I love cats so much. If I wanna make it more obvious that it's a conclusion or just otherwise sort of formatically make it stand out, um, Medium lets you do like a little storybook big letter here. So you can just do it like that and it sort of wraps around the text to make it a really big eye. I think this looks nice. 
but again, don't do this for every paragraph because it looks a little silly. Like if you do big T here and a big T here and suddenly you're like, oh my God, what is happening to the story? You might want to know as well how to add a table of contents. If your story is long, if there's a lot of sections and you just want your readers to be able to save it and navigate and always come back to it and know what's happening, that's important. You'll want to add a table of contents. Uh, you can do this two ways. I'm not even going to talk about the second way because it's, it's faffy and you don't need to. Just use Chrome and download the table of contents extension. What this lets you do is here, your very furthest section, as you can see, these correspond to these. I like to sort of differentiate this because I mean, that just looks like underlined text. So I normally make it a code block. And the way you do this is you just do three back ticks and it puts it into a code block. So what we have here is a story on Medium. There are a couple other things that will be useful when it comes to um, when it comes to sort of polishing it off and hitting the publish button. First, if you want to share a draft link, you can't just copy this URL. This won't send anybody anywhere. You have to click share draft link and this gives you a special link that you can share with your friends, your family, your frenemies, whoever you want. And this will let them read your story even when it's in draft format. The second thing you want to know is if you want to share it to Twitter, you can just click yes. And then if you've connected your Twitter account to your Medium account, it will just ship it off when you hit publish. That's great stuff. And of course, you can also add to publication, um, you know, pick the one that you find the best for this story and then you can submit it to them. So like if I were to hit this one, just as an example, that would change to submit. There are a couple other things in there that's good to know, like you can change the display title. Um, this means that when it's a story on Medium's feed, they'll see what you put here in the title and subtitle rather than what you've put here. Um, not a lot of people use this. And if you're trying to canonize this, so for example, if you are importing this from your blog, you can go to advanced settings and say it was published elsewhere and import and, you know, use the link that it originally appeared on to help Google sort of avoid duplicate content, which is really great. But the last thing to do is to hit publish. I would not recommend stressing out too much about the tags. I, I normally say like, try to pick tags that overlap with the topic pages. So if you go to medium.com forward slash topics, um, it'll give you a list. Topics are what Medium curates into. So if you go to the comics, for example, everything in here has been curated by Medium curator into the comics section. Um, tags are only manual. So for example, this shows us everything that a reader, a writer has manually tagged as a hashtag cat story. Um, and it's not, I mean, I know some people like to use this to read, but I don't know very many who do. Most people just, you know, read whatever medium sends them. You can also email a link to your subscribers. Medium literally recently, very recently changed this. So if you go to your settings, scroll down to your followers, you can display a message to promote email subscription. So what this means is somebody gets to the bottom of your story and it says, subscribe to Zuli for more stories from Zuli. Um, you can do this if you want. I don't because I already have a newsletter, so I don't. But if you were to do that and you were to hit publish and it would email a link to your subscribers when you hit publish, you can also schedule for later. Um, you can do this like a years out in advance. I typically do this a few weeks out in advance when I'm going on holiday and I just want to be able to enjoy my time off without logging on to medium.com every single day. And then you just hit publish and that's it. That's the whole editor. That's, that's everything that you need to know. Again, just focus on writing the best story you can. This, there's a lot of other random stuff you can do in the editor. I don't want to talk about that though, because in my experience, less is more when it comes to the editor. Focusing on your story, your content, your links, your backup links, your structure, your, your flow. That's way more important than knowing how to bold stuff. That's it. That's my medium editor update video. I know a lot of people were asking for this, so hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a like. You can always subscribe to my channel. I'm nearly to 8,000 followers, very exciting. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. I try to get to my comments uh, once a week on Mondays. So look out for my answer then. And other than that, I hope everyone's enjoying the kind of weird dead days between Christmas and New Year's and that you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful 2021 up ahead of you. All right, happy writing everyone.